I'm holding in my hands my first ever carbon steel pan that I bought almost eight years ago by a company called Metfair Bourget. You may or may not have heard of this very concerning recall by the French government on this product. Many of you have been asking me about my opinions on this recall and where I stand on my previous recommendations of their products. For the most part, I've tried to stay out of it and allow the facts of the situation to surface. At the moment, I'm disappointed by the actions of Matfer and can no longer recommend their products until they take responsibility for the issue and correct it from ever happening again. I think Matfer has an opportunity to lead this new wave of consumer safety regarding carbon steel cookware, but I'll address that a bit later. So, what happened? What is this recall about? Well, let's take some time to explain all the background information, and there's a lot to explain. In April, certain batches of the carbon steel pans or skillets, which were made by the company Matfer, had been recalled in France. Certain lots or batches of Matford's black steel carbon steel pans were tested in France where they're manufactured by a regional regulatory agency, the DDPP. The agency found that when mild acidic solutions were heated in the pan from these batches, arsenic, chromium, and iron leached out in excess of the standards recommended by the European Union. Because all three of these metals are considered very harmful to humans at levels found, the skillets were recalled in France. Matford has appealed this decision and maintains that their skillets comply with safety and testing standards. So you're probably asking yourself, have these skillets been recalled in the United States? No. Here's the crazy thing. The United States does not have clear standards that dictate just how much certain toxic metals, such as arsenic and chromium, can be present in cookware or released into food, such as how the European Union does. While there is a general expectation that cookware should be safe, and what the Food and Drug Administration calls of a purity suitable for intended use, the FDA does not provide guidelines on what that purity might be. It also doesn't require manufacturers to submit proof that their products won't release toxic metals into their pans or food. Now, when I investigated a bit further, the FDA did say that they will review pan formulations for suitability upon request, but otherwise does not do it routinely. That sounds pretty alarming to me. It's basically on the cookware manufacturers themselves to ensure that their products are safe. And to be fair, Many companies do by employing third-party laboratories to ensure that their products meet basic standards. So in the U.S., essentially, it's the honor system. If a company finds out that their product is unsafe, it's up to them to voluntarily recall it from the American market. If you bought a carbon steel skillet from Matt for recently and still have the packaging, you can actually check the lot number. I'll put links in the description of this video along with the lot numbers for you to reference. So let's talk about how toxic are we talking? The World Health Organization considers arsenic to be one of the top 10 chemicals of public health concern. Long-term exposure can increase your risk of lung, bladder, and skin cancer. And it's also associated with developmental effects, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Chromium is linked to a higher risk of various heart and liver ailments, but it also has been linked to various neural developmental disorders. Now, to be fair, cookware is not likely to be the biggest source of exposure to either arsenic or chromium. Food and water poses a much greater risk because arsenic is present in soil, for example, and it can easily get into water supplies. It's also taken up in large amounts by certain common foods, including rice or even apple juice. Still, the risk posed by arsenic and chromium and cookware are cumulative. You may not be able to eliminate all contact with them, but as with most toxic substance, it's best to reduce exposure and use safe cookware whenever possible. So why can I no longer recommend Matfer, my first ever carbon steel pan? It's simple. 
I cannot recommend a skillet that potentially contains arsenic and may leach elevated levels of chromium. And to be fair, the contamination is limited to certain batches of Matt Fair skillets. But the findings by the French agency are extremely concerning, and the lack of clear regulatory guidance in the United States is also very alarming. Furthermore, Matt Fair has declined to remove the products from the affected batches from the U.S. market. But for me, it gets worse because of how Matt Fair is handling the situation and has made me lose faith in its ability to put safety for its consumers first. Matt Fair has released several posts on social media addressing the issue. The first few posts were kind of childish with emojis and gave this feeling that they weren't necessarily taking this very seriously. Eventually, they did release a statement without emojis, which seemed to be very serious, but they placed the blame on their material suppliers, the regulatory agency themselves and the testing procedure that they used, and even us, the consumers. Again, I'm gonna post the link of their statement in the description of this video for you to read for yourself. Matford has tried to place the blame on consumers by updating their product page to include new verbiage, and I'm quoting, not intended for use with acidic ingredients, lemon juice, vinegar, tomato sauce, etc. The problem is, if you look on the archive pages, and you can do this by going to archive.org, the verbiage was not there previously, and it's clearly bait and switch. Now, I wanted to read a quote directly from Matfer. Every Matfer Bourget black carbon steel pan includes explicit instructions to avoid acidic foods in their uses. We believe that the product should only be measured for safety purposes for instructed and reasonable uses. This is also the reason why the BGCCRF explicitly advises against using black carbon steel material with acidic foods. However, this statement is false, or at least was false, because they keep changing their proper use instructions. For example, on the frequently asked questions page, one of the question poses, can I use acidic ingredients in my black carbon steel pan? The response, black carbon steel frying pans are not intended for use with highly acidic ingredients, using ingredients like lemon, juice, tomato, tomato sauce, vinegar, and other acidic components will damage the seasoning on your pan. They never mention leaching metals to a level that will fail a test. The explanation only mentions damaging seasoning and damaged seasoning can be repaired. Leaching metals is a very different thing. Harmful levels of arsenic should not be present in your pans. It doesn't matter how the pan was tested. It contains high concentrates of arsenic that was previously not disclosed. Netfair is focusing on the way their pans were tested, but they should be focusing on the results of the test. And by the way, the test that the government did is the correct way of testing for heavy metals. Matford claims the test consisted of boiling a highly acidic compound for two hours, citric acid. Citric acid is a weak acid with an observed pH between three and six. For reference, tomato sauce has a pH of about somewhere around three and a half to about five. Furthermore, they tried to use this analogy that kind of drove me bonkers. And I'm quoting here. To try to explain this by an analogy, imagine an automaker developed a new diesel truck with explicit use instructions that no unleaded gasoline be used in the diesel engine. The US NHTSA and other safety groups only test a truck with diesel fuel and require that this truck have a warning against using unleaded gasoline. However, the state where the car is manufactured decides to test this new truck by putting unleaded gasoline in the fuel tank, which someone could do in a worst case scenario, causing the new truck to fail their state specific new safety tests that only applies to the vehicles manufactured in that state. They essentially go on by saying that that's what occurred when a DDPP decided to test the mat for black carbon steel frying pans while using an improper testing method. Mm, that's not necessarily how I would put it. I would use this analogy. Imagine an automaker developed a new diesel truck with explicit use instructions that the truck could only be driven on streets. No highway driving was allowed, even for short amounts of time, because the higher the speeds will essentially make the truck fall apart. 
and exposed a driver to direct fumes, which would be redirected into the cabin, poisoning the driver. That's basically what we're talking here. Matt Furt keeps implying that there's a safety risk if you cook with tomato or lemon, which shows that they don't have faith that there might not be a risk in the metals themselves. The consumer should not have to rely on a layer of polymerized oil to shield themselves from arsenic and chromium. If all that's protecting the consumer is their ability to maintain a flawless layer of seasoning, then these products should not be sold, and I agree with the recall. Seasoning was never intended to be a safety layer to prevent harmful arsenic and chromium from leaching. Just like seasoning was never intended to be a nonstick solution, but rather a positive secondary outcome of its primary goal, which is to protect the pan from bad rust or oxidation. It was never intended to protect you, the user, from harmful leaching. So using Matt for his logic, now all of a sudden, I can't throw a tomato in my carbon steel pan in fears of poisoning myself and dangerously elevating my risk of cancer and other health concerns. Besides, on Matford's own website, they are showcasing a campfire paella recipe, which has acidic ingredients. You can clearly see them pouring tomato juice in the carbon steel pans. Furthermore, going through the recipe, you can see that they're calling for lemon juice and tomato and simmering the juice and the marinades and bring them to a boil and all these things. I mean, does it actually sound like to you that their carbon steel pans are absolutely not intended to be used with any acidity whatsoever? Foods are often characterized as either acidic or basic, but it's not always cut and dry like that. There are foods out there that are acidic to some degree. This would make their product very niche and almost useless, which is not fair to carbon steel. So this brings me to my last point. What other companies are following this flawed logic of only test our pans for harmful arsenic and chromium leaching when there's several layers of seasoning present? Oh, and by the way, our pans are never intended to be used with any acidic food, so you can't use acidic compounds in your test either. This pan here is my favorite carbon steel pan, the Debayer or Deboye Mineral B. Now, I'm wondering if this pan's safe. Debayer also states to avoid cooking with acidic foods in carbon steel as it strips the seasoning. Again, I agree with that statement. Highly acidic foods or even mildly acidic foods cooked for longer durations of time in liquid does impact seasoning of cast iron and carbon steel. However, I've seared tomatoes, for example, with no issues before when it came to seasoning, and my pans have several layers of seasoning. Now, if the seasoning did strip off, it wasn't a big deal, and the pan would easily take care of itself on the next cook. But this statement is only in regards to seasoning and not leaching. There's a huge difference, and that matters. I've reached out to Deboye, and here's the response that I got. This product recall does not concern Deboye steel products. The raw material used for manufacturing De Boya steel products is French. We regularly conduct tests with the SGS laboratory to ensure compliance of raw materials used with the regulations governing. The latest test conducted declared our products to be perfectly compliant with these two standards. And that all sounded wonderful until I read this statement here. It sounds like to me, the boy is saying, hey, we added a disclaimer about acidic products. Therefore, that also makes us compliant with the regulations. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So you're probably asking, what are my final thoughts? What do I think about all this? Again, I am disappointed with how Matt Fur has been handling this situation since April. I'm also now concerned with other brands, especially American brands. Is Lodge or Made In safe? If so, they can capitalize on Matford's mistakes and show their bare pans testing results. But to my knowledge, they're kind of quiet right now. I think this issue is going to shake up the cast iron and carbon steel cookware culture. Because up until now, cast iron and carbon steel has been labeled as natural safe pans when compared to bare aluminum, for example, which we know leaches and forever chemicals like Teflon. So for now, I think I'll be putting my carbon steel pans aside and giving them a rest and using my stainless steel pans while I monitor this issue very closely. For those of you that are affected, 
I encourage you to return your pans if you still can and voice your concern with Madfur. By the way, I have reached out to Lodge and made in for comments, but I haven't heard back yet. I'll make sure to update you guys if I do. I'm simply sharing my opinions on this matter since a lot of you asked. Do what makes sense for you and your family. That's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative, and if you did, please consider subscribing and joining our channel memberships. I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.